Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Everyone's favorite channel, talking about life, talking about the fun things, and some of the not so fun things we go through. Um, so, been a bit of a break. I have been busy slash ran out of ideas. <laughs> um, and, you know, felt like I kind of had a lot of a info dump when I was recovering from my surgery. And now, feeling pretty healthy. And the brain is going again. It's churning. And I want to talk today about desire, which... And by the way, you can tell the quality is probably different because this is just my laptop webcam. Um, kind of going for a different vibe, seeing if the, the laptop will hold up. Definitely not as good as an iPhone, I'm sure. Uh, the picture definitely looks worse, and I believe the sound isn't as great either. So we're going to bear through it. This is a uh, bare bones type of operation here. We're not making, uh, we're not making sense even off these videos, so not going to go off on equipment at this point but this is a not new topic for me desire something i've talked about and i'll link below some of the things i've talked about already on it and how it gets in our way and you know what we're gonna have a little bit of a show i talked about the show earlier we're gonna have a little bit of a visual for you so you can really uh really grasp the concept so let's talk about this all right so let's see i hope the light doesn't shine too much here yeah that's good okay so we're gonna draw a little line you know got a lot of little spaces here a lot of dashing a lot of dashing here not super straight because i can't operate very well right now okay so let's just pretend this is a straight line. It's close. Let's go ahead and call this line life. This is our life, right? And as anyone knows, life is not a straight line. There are things that get in the way. There are challenges. There are obstacles. But that is all part of the path, right? You know, there's things that get in the way, like something here, maybe something here, something here. You know, there's things that happen, right? We get through it. We get through these barriers. We keep going, right? What we do to ourselves is we put our own barriers. And those barriers are often the most challenging to break through and sometimes can be the most rewarding to break through. But we set ourselves back a lot. So this is the typical line of life. Things are going good crash things are going good crash things are going good crash and the more you crash the more you have issues you figure it out you figure out how to handle yourself when things aren't great you figure out where you're strong at where you're weak at and you know you burst through that barrier and you move on to the next thing you know there's going to be a challenge on the line but you know you got a lot of time in between here where it's great and those that's what we live for right and these bad times, they teach us things and they keep us on our toes a bit, which can be fun. Um, and, you know, depending on what the challenges are, obviously, but they can be fun to kind of break through and, and really learn about yourself. So, you know, it's, it's, it can be good. It can be good to push yourself through something. The problem that we do is we put our own barriers up and the barriers I'm talking about are desire, wanting things. We will throw this entire path out of whack to get what we want. And wanting things is not bad. Wanting to have success, great. Wanting to meet a great partner, great. Wanting to have great friends, go on great vacations. All those things are great. They're going to contribute to your life positively. But what are you giving up to get those things? A lot of the time, it's our time and heartache. And I think a lot of the time we discuss success and we talk about all the tough times you have to go through. And it's impossible to have success if you don't challenge yourself, you don't push yourself and all that. 
that is true. Nothing comes easy, but we make it more difficult than we have to by putting our desires above everything else. So let's, I'm going to add some more lines here just to get some more of a picture. So, you know, we have all these, this is life again. <laughs> We've got our small little obstacles we get through. And let's go ahead and throw desire in the way. So let's have a big line here, a big line here, a big line here. I am not going to say that every desire is worse, is causing us more issues than, you know, these obstacles that get in our way. Because again, you can have a horrible obstacle. You could have a family member that dies. You could go broke. You could have awful things happen to you. But again, those are the things that make us stronger. And, you know, when it comes to death, it's not something you're ever going to necessarily be thankful for. But I think most people can look back on someone dying and they can learn something from it. So there's always good things to come out of bad things. At least that's how I view things. So, you know, we have these huge things here. And with desire, I don't think it's like a normal life obstacle where you can just break through it. I think you kind of got to skid around it a little bit. You got to skid around it. You got to go completely off track to get back on track. So we've got, we've got to jump around. We can't just break through it. Sometimes breakthroughs come quick. Sometimes they come slow, but it's part of the path, right? It's part of the plan that's laid out. Desire is what we threw into the mix. That wasn't, that wasn't planned. Universe didn't have that plan for us. That was something we put in there. We have free will, right? We can throw in anything we want. If we want to go do crack cocaine tomorrow, we can do it. Are we going to do it? No, but we can, and that would probably throw you off your path a little bit. Um, so those are the things that we can do, and most of us know better um, than to do them or do them consistently. To just you know throw it, throw in this bad habit, that bad habit, that desire, that desire. We throw them in more than we need to, though. And this is something I'm trying to work on, and I feel like I've done a good job with it uh, the past few months. Because I've talked on this channel a lot about not having a job. And I do have a freelance gig now, which pays like a full-time job. It's not, a, it's not like a full-time employment type of deal with benefits and all that. But as an entry-level journalism major, I'm not expecting a ton, <laughs> honestly. Um, I'll take a freelance gig that pays well, so... There's a little update for you guys, but in the whole, cause this was a long process of me interviewing with this company and my arm hurts holding this up, but, um, this was a long process and throughout the whole thing, I didn't really want it. And I don't say that, like, I hoped I didn't get it, but I wasn't sitting around like, man, I really hope I get this job. I really hope I get this job because first of all, I definitely might not get it. I'm going to set this down for a second. I might not get it, and even if I do get it, I don't know if it's what I'm supposed to do. If I don't get this job, there could be something way better waiting on the other side, right? And that's just something I've learned about life, is that you never know what's waiting, right? Tomorrow, your life could change. I but Before I erase this entire board for this video, I had something at the bottom that said, it only takes one. And what I mean by that is it it only takes one experience, one opportunity, one person in your life that can change everything. And that's just one. You could find that one tomorrow. You may not find it for 10 years, but you could find it tomorrow. You don't know, right? So that's the value of just continuing to go and continue to stay on this path because you never know when that one thing's going to pop out. And it really can just be one thing. It seems like, you know, we need all these things in our life to be happy. And we do need a handful of things to keep us going. But there could be one thing that really just gets us straight completely. So it's worth it to keep going for that, right? And I have no idea where I started at with that. Oh, yeah, not wanting stuff. So 
you know, I didn't know what was waiting behind that door. That door may have closed and another one may have opened. So I didn't want it. I didn't want it. And not that I'm talking to girls all the time, but if there ever is a girl that pops in my life, I'm like, well, we'll see. I don't really want her because I don't know. I don't know whether she's what I'm supposed to have or not. And if she's not, then there could be someone right after her that, that is exactly what I need. So, you know, things like that. I just don't really care to have things. And part of it is because I'm happy with what I have. I think gratitude's huge. I think I've talked about this channel a lot that being thankful for what you have, you're set, right? Everything else is gravy after that. If you're happy being single and, you know, doing the work you do and doing the hobbies you do and having the friends you have, everything else is gravy. You get a better job. Oh my God. Like I was happy doing that job when I got that job. I'm happy as hell now. I was single and now I found this great partner. Oh my gosh. I didn't even need her, but I got her, you know, uh, oh, a new friend didn't need one, got one happy about it. So just being thankful for what you have and not being in need of extra because you're never going to stop being in need of extra. You're always going to find something you want more and getting to a point where you're happy with what you have and you don't really care to have anything else. Everything else that comes to you is going to be great. And it's funny because when you stop wanting stuff, that's when stuff really comes to you. I mean, again, this year, like I find after over a year of looking for a job, I finally got something I really like. Um, and I didn't really want it. I didn't care. I was like, whatever, I'm going to apply for stuff. I like, we'll see what happens. I didn't really have expectations and I got it. And that's just one example, but you know, again, who knows what's coming tomorrow. So let's pull the board back up. So these desires, right? So I've talked, I, I hate myself for continuing to talk about the girl I liked last year, but again, it's very foundational for me. And I may never stop talking about it, who knows? My future girlfriend slash wife will probably hate me because I'll continue to talk about her. But let's go ahead and say this was it. This was her. I was doing great before this, right? I was getting out of college, ready to enter the real world, the big boy world. And this girl threw me off my path for months. And again, it was my fault. I always want to implement that it was my fault. I wanted her and I purposely went out of my way to seek that relationship. That was my desire that I pushed myself into. So my fault, I got off my path, right? This path is what I was supposed to do. This desire got in the way that I put there and it, here's the five months right here, that little arch. Yep. That's the five months and it's not five months wasted because man, I have almost written two books on everything I've learned in the past year. Keep an eye on the second one coming out uh, soon. Almost written two books. I've made this YouTube channel, talked a lot about things, written a lot of articles, done a lot of podcasts, talking about all the things I've learned. So not these five months, very important months, maybe the most, five most important months of my life because I got to a point I got to a breaking point and that's what happens with, with desire. You chase something, you chase something, you chase something. And there's two paths. Either you get it and realize it wasn't what you wanted. So you spent all that time wanting just to find out it didn't make you any happier. It, it wasn't what you needed. Or you spend all the time you don't get it. And it's like, man, I just wasted so much time chasing that. I didn't, didn't even get it. But hey, these five months, they can do a lot for you. Use me as an example. So again, it's not wasted time, but I feel like you are still, I just got marker all over my leg. <laughs> I feel like you're still best to go on the straight and narrow path. And you're going to have, you're going to have to learn these lessons because if I didn't learn this lesson, then I would have learned it at some point. And maybe I wouldn't have spent as much time learning it. But it was going to come eventually. So again, it's not a waste of time. It put me back on track even sooner than it put me back on track 
and it made me stronger, right? So I can, so when this, when this uh, little barrier comes next, breaking through it, not even a chance. I got my helmet on, I got my shoulder pads. I'm bursting through that. I'm way stronger because of that, because of this desire that I got past. And now I'm strong. I can fight through it. I may not fight through it perfectly, but it's going to be way better than it would have been if I just kept on this straight and narrow and I didn't learn the lesson and I broke through it. So there are positives to having desires, but just know that it's going to throw you off. And strongly desiring something can often push you, push you away from it. So let's go ahead and do something else here. Let's say this is you and this is your desire. Okay. So in a normal world where, you know, or let's just say this is the thing that you, I'm trying to think how to word it. Yeah, let's just say it's your desire. Okay. So if you strongly desire this thing, you constantly think about it, you constantly work towards it, you it's all you're doing. You're cr kind of creating this resistance. You're creating this resistance where you're so focused on it that it can't naturally flow to you because the natural flow of life is slow. I mean, look at a river. A river, a river may look like it's, it's moving really quick, but it's, it's not moving that quick. It's kind of just floating along. It's hitting some rocks. It's hitting some fallen tree branches and it's going. And that's that. You know, a tree, one, it grows what? An inch, two inches a year, depending on the tree. Very slow. That's the natural order of life. Very slow movement. And the things that you're doing today are going to impact you tomorrow and a year from now and five years from now because it moves slow. Everything like everything that you get tomorrow is the product of things that you have done the past five, 10 years. It all builds into these moments and that could be bad or good. If you have a lot of bad issues, a lot of bad habits, what you get tomorrow may not be good. If you have a lot of good habits, a lot of good things you do, what you get tomorrow could be great. And when we just constantly push against this wall, oh, I want it, I want it, I need it, I need it, I can't live without it. This is never going to get to this wall. And you're really just going to end up pushing the wall into this desire till it slams against the wall and is dead. And if you don't completely kill it, you may have, you may push it all the way over here and have to kind of slowly float back for it to come back out. Because again, the natural order is slow. It's supposed to be a little smooth, you know, something that takes a long time. And it's, it's going to kind of, you're going to slowly flow here. And you're going to kind of meet, it's going to meet you in the middle. You know, you put in the work, it's going to meet you there. But you can't dedicate everything to it. And this is a good lesson for people especially if you want to be in a relationship with someone constantly pushing that barrier you want to show them how great you are you want to prove them to them you're loyal you want to do all this how can they turn you down if you do all this work and you slam them into that wall and we're going to see if i can get this marker off my leg a little bit you're going to slam them into that wall because you push too hard and that's basically what I did. And it's something I'll never do again. And uh, part of the reason I'll never do it again is because I have a lot going on in my life now. And I've realized the value of building my own life up. <laughs> kind of crazy that we have to go through this where it's like, hey, you know what? I actually have my own life. I can make myself happy. I don't need that person. I don't need them. And they can be a compliment. At some point, yeah, but they're not going to be 100% of my day, and I don't want to be 100% of their day either. I want them to have their stuff. If I can be 
10, 20% of their day, that's great. That's great. That's a really nice balance because, again, if they ever leave and you gave them 98%, then you are screwed. 2%, like you're still around, but you got a lot of work to do. But if you lose 10 to 20%, man, look at the stock market. You can make that up in a few months. <laughs> 10 to 20% is a uh, very, it's a small hole in comparison to what happens if you make them your everything. And you know what? It's the same thing with jobs. It's the same thing with any desire. Those are the two main desires I think people have, but I'm sure there's more out there that uh, would work. But man, you dedicate yourself to a, a job and they fire you or they go out of business or you quit because you realize it sucks. It's not what you wanted. It's not what you needed. And you gave them 98%, man. You were working 80 hours a week. You got no friends. You got no relationship. House is kind of depressing. And you come home to that house after quitting or getting fired or whatever. And it's like, man, I gave them everything and it's gone. It's gone. And that's, that's what happens when you have too strong of a desire. So have your desires, have your, have them, keep them small. Another thing I've talked about before is having missions instead of goals. Because on a mission, you can break what you want to do in life down to a very all-encompassing kind of net. And no matter what you do, you're going to fall into that net. Because you know how you want to contribute to society and the world. And you may fall in the middle of that net or the left side or the right side of that net. But you're in the net. You wanted to be in the net. That's all you cared about. But if you put your goals into these small little cups, I mean, I just got home from playing golf. Like, if you if you make your goal the cup, it's going to be hard as hell to get that ball in there. It's going to take some time. You know, if you have a, let's say, the, the entire green, that's your mission right? You can hit the green pretty quick. I mean, I can't <laughs> right now, but it's a lot easier to hit the green than it is to get it in the hole. And hey, that hole has a flag stick in it too. So it's, there's even more resistance. If you get these really tight defined goals, you say, I want to be the CEO of Walmart. Well, you could, but that's a tough thing to pull off, you know? But if you say, I want to lead a great organization. That can mean anything, man. That can mean anything. You know, I want to lead a great group of people. You can do that in so many different ways. That is hitting the green right there. My, I think, I still don't know exactly how to define my mission. I still think it's to help people. I just want to help people. And I personally find that I'm most useful through forums like this, through writing, you know, if I can talk to you, can I talk to you through my voice or can I talk to you through my words? Those are the two things that I'm looking to do to help people or to educate people or whatever. I want to help improve people in some way. And, you know, if in 10 or 20 years, I, I don't do YouTube, I don't write, which I'd be shocked at, uh, but you know, if I if I drop those things and I found something better that works better for me and for what I'm trying to do, that's great. I don't. I'm not. I'm not so tied to the writing or to the videos or the podcast that I have to do it. It's not something I have to do. I have to make people happy. I have to help people, but it can be in a ton of different ways. So that's my green. That is me hitting the ball onto the green and winning. Because I don't have to get in the cup. My goal is not that big or that small, <laughs> I guess. There's there's not a ton of resistance because I've given myself a very large area to fall into. And, you know, a lot of people that are successful might say, oh, you're making it too easy on yourself. La, da, 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 da. You know, to find extreme success on earth, you do probably need to be a lunatic. You do have to set 
very defined goals and put all your attention to it. But again, I've heard enough discussions from celebrities and rich people, famous people, that once you get to that top, you realize you're really not any happier. And sometimes you're even sadder because you're not happier. You, you finally accomplished your entire life's dreams and it really wasn't that great. You're happy that you achieve something and all that, but that kind of fades over time. And you realize that, you know, to be happy, you have to focus on those small things. Uh, you have to be grateful for what you have. You don't have to need anything beyond what you have right now. So, yeah, you to be ultra successful money-wise or fame-wise, you might have to be like that. But this is not a channel that promotes that stuff because I don't really care about any sort of earthly gains. I don't care about fame, fortune, although I would love to have a good amount of money, you know. I don't need to be a billionaire. Um, and I well, I'll be a millionaire at one point, but I don't need it I don't need it anytime soon. I don't need it at all. Uh, I would like it, but I don't I don't need that because I'm happy with who I am now. I'm happy with who I do now. And I don't believe anything gained on earth really contributes much to my, you know, overall being. The, I just saw something earlier, I've heard it before, that we have, we own two things in this life, our soul and moments in time. That's all we have. We can't take anything else to the afterlife with us. We can't take our car, our house, anything. You know, the, the, the work we do for our soul and the moments we experience that's all we got you know the the experience we're contributing to the to the universe and the greater um, knowledge of the universe that's all we have you know that's and that's the most important thing so that's what i focus on and that's what i hope you focus on at least a little bit because it'll make you happier and hopefully will give you a good sense of purpose because that's very important too and yeah so this has been a long video but if you stuck around thank you i hope this was something that uh you can take something out of and i really hope the quality is passable because i just spent almost half hour talking through probably a not so great mic um so that's that i would try to not go on as much of a hiatus with videos but we'll see we'll see if anything comes to me so thank you for watching